Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Kingsley. How are we doing? <laughs> Very well, thank you. It's a lovely day, isn't it? It's a uh, beautiful we, day. We thank God for this day. And I thank God to see so many of you today. Uh, we have uh, some uh, folks who are, are joining us today for the first time. A warm welcome to the Higgins family. Higgs family and a warm welcome to uh, Noah's uh, parent, uh, Noah and Isaac, and Alpha, uh, a, a warm welcome to you. Uh, enjoy the service, uh, you know, for us Africans, we say things and get away with it, so whether you like it or not, you're, you're stuck with us for, for a long haul. <laughs> Look, it's fun. Enjoy it. Come out on Sunday, enjoy the service, pray, be reflective, and you know, go home with, with, with high spirits. Okay? So, a moment of silence as we begin. We sing our opening hymn. Oh, wait, listen. <laughs> you can't sing. All the information you will need for the service will come up on the screen. The Lord be with you. I know so you. We say together a prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourselves. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment, and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and in the works of your commandments that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body, mind, and spirit through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we come to the time of our Bible reading. For those of you who have followed me online and for my parishioners, you may begin to notice that I am not your conventional vicar. I am unconventional, which means that today we are going to hear something about the Old Testament reading. A Bible reading today is from Genesis chapter 32 from verses 22 to 31. Let's hear the reading of God's word. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said to Jacob, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask of my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and he passed through Peniel, limping because of his hip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. We thank you for a glorious day. And I thank you for everybody here today and for those who are watching me online. I pray that as I deliver this message that you have given me, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, unhindered and uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. I pray that you will think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. None of me and all of you, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to speak to you today about reconciliation, or in other words, making peace. And in the spirit of that, I will talk to you about Jacob and Esau. And isn't it wonderful that little Jacob is here today? In Genesis 25, Jacob took his brother's birthright, Esau. As if that was not enough, with the help of his mother, Jacob tricked his father into blessing him, a blessing that was meant for his brother Esau. Jacob had obeyed God. When he did all of that, his mother sent him away to go to his uncle's house, Laban. And in the process of that, he went and found a wife, and all of that is in Genesis 27 following. 
Now after that, he leaves his uncle's house. But before he leaves and approaching the territory of his brother, he was afraid. So he prayed as he returned to Canaan, the region where he brother, his brother lives. After he had prayed, he acted with a corresponding action. So after the prayers, he sent everything away. He sent his brother, his wives, his children, everything he had with him, he sent away. I will not let you go until you bless me, Jacob said. Friends, we need to get to that place where we tell God, I am not going to leave your sight until you bless me. Jacob prepares to meet Esau in Genesis 32, 1 to 8. In verses 9 to 12, Jacob prayed before God. In verses 22 to 29, Jacob wrestles with God. And in 22 to 32, God blesses Jacob. Jacob was so afraid as he approached Esau's territory. He thought Esau would, would be very angry and perhaps, perhaps violent because of how he had tricked him over 20 years ago. In that fear, he prayed to God. And this is what he said to God. This is what he said in his prayer. He reminded God of his promise to protect him. He thanked God for all the undeserved blessing that has he already received from God. He prayed for God to rescue him from the potentially harmful situation that he was facing. And he said to God that the reason why he is asking for those things is so that he could fulfill the purpose and plan of God for his life. After he had prayed and sent everybody away, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestles with him till daybreak. As the man saw that Jacob was overpowering him, he took his hip and broke it. In that process, Jacob said, well, I will not let you go until you bless me. I'm broken now, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> So the man blessed him. Most of the time in the Old Testament, you will hear the angel of the Lord appeared and God spoke. So whenever you hear the angel of the Lord appear and God speak, it's actually God doing the act here. So here God was wrestling with Jacob in that fight and in that prayer. Jacob was desperately wrestling with God. For the promised blessing, God allowed him to prevail, but in the process, God injured Jacob. As a reminder that Jacob must no longer walk in his own strength, but rely entirely on God. God blesses Jacob. The name Jacob actually implies a deceiver in the Hebrew. God changed that name to Israel, which means he that struggles with God. So as Christians, we are called the Israel of God, those who struggles on the journey with God. God does not want his people to be so passive, but he wants us to be actively pursuing his blessing. You may not wrestle with God physically, but you can lay hold on God through intense and persistent prayer. This involves confessing our sins and accepting the gift of forgiveness in Jesus Christ. To be blessed by God also means that we need to express an intense desire for God's presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This involves trusting God entirely to discover his purposes in our lives as we seek God and his kingdom and his righteousness. Brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 18, there is a clear instruction 
of how to make up if you have wronged anybody or if someone has stepped on your toes. So I don't know who have said anything about you. I don't know who you've had an argument about. I don't know who you have quarreled with. I don't know who you don't like or hate. But I'm here to tell you today, Jacob tricked his brother and took his birthright. As if that was not enough, he deceived his father into blessing him, a blessing that was meant for his senior brother. Is this familiar in our families? <laughs> you are too quiet. I think what I'm talking about is very familiar in the families in which we come from. So after this incident, Jacob ran away. Now he's preparing to meet his brother and he's afraid. So he prays, wrestles with God, and God blesses him. If you read Genesis 33, you realize that Jacob met Esau and he found favor before Esau. And they did made up and they have their peace. So as you go home today, the person that you're quarreling with, the person that you have had an argument with, the person that did what to you, who stepped on your toes, who said what where, I don't want to know all of that. But go to Genesis chapter 32. Read the whole chapter. There's a clear instruction on how to make up to those who you have offended or to those who have offended you. In this instant, Jacob made the effort of going to his brother. One of the powerful things you can do is that, and I've done this many times, someone has done something bad to you, but you have the temerity to ring them up or go and see them and say to them, look, you said that, you said that, this and so and so day, I don't think you did right. Let's leave that behind us and move on. Maybe I said something that wasn't right, forgive me. And you said something that wasn't right, I forgive you, let's move on. And look, nine times out of 10, when I do that, my respect level on the scale of one to 10 shift into maybe 15. Because not many people are willing to have that boldness and confidence to go back and make peace. We try to hide in our own shells. Jacob here made the effort of going to see his brother, which was a very terrible situation. He thought that his brother would be angry and violent, but God gave him favor. And as he met his brother, he found favor before his brother. So as you go home today, I don't know who have wronged you. I don't know who you have wronged. I don't know your, your family maker. But I think something is going on somewhere. Go and make your peace with that person. And God will bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. Let's respond to the sermon with the creed. Brothers and sisters, do you believe and trust in God, the Father? I believe and trust in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God, his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Blessed Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of children, for children are a gift from you, and they are our heritage. So I pray for all the children in church today, May your blessing be poured out on them. I pray that their destiny will be fulfilled. I pray that their purposes will be established. And I pray that your blessing will be upon them. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray for your church militant here on earth. We pray for the Church of England and we pray for your church, your universal church. We pray for our Archbishop Stephen and Justin. May your blessing be upon them as they lead your church here in England. We pray for our Archdeacons. We pray for our priests and deacons. May you inspire us as we continue to serve your people with your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of St. Lawrence. We thank you for all the things we do here. And so we pray for our weekly services and for our online services. We pray for all those who participate in our online services. We pray that your blessing may be upon all as we seek to serve you here in Eastwood. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for our world, we pray for the nations of the world, and we pray for this pandemic. Father, you are the greatest healer, and so we pray that you move away this terrible disease off from us. We pray that you bring healing to everybody who have symptoms of this terrible disease. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray for our government, we pray for Boris and his cabinet. We pray for members of parliament and we remember today our own member of parliament. We pray that you pour out your blessing upon them. Grant them wisdom and grace as they seek to serve this nation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the NHS. We pray for doctors. We pray for consultants. We pray for GP service. We remember today nurses, volunteers. We pray for all those who work in our hospitals, that you will protect them, that you will keep your blessing upon them. We pray that you will not allow any sickness to come to them as they seek to administer medicine to those who are unwell. And so we remember today all those who are sick, that you will bring your healing hands and bring your healing to all those who are feeble. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Almighty God, we pray for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray for the families of those who have died and we pray for them as they prepare to say goodbye to their loved ones. May you strengthen them with hope and give them the joy of your eternal salvation. We pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ that they will rest in peace and rise in glory. So may your blessing be upon those who are preparing to say goodbye to their loved one. Help them in this time of grief. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, I pray for every member sitting here today. I pray for all those who are watching this service online, that your blessing will be abound upon them. May you pour out your spirit upon us. We pray that your power will overshadow us and none of this terrible disease will come near our dwelling places. We pray that you keep us from harm's way. We pray that you help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. As we prepare to go and make peace with our family members, with our friends and with our colleagues, we pray that you give us the blessing of Jacob and help us to make peace with those who have wronged us and for those to whom we have wronged. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are the body of Christ. In one body, we were brought by the blood of Jesus. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of God be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace by waving to each other. <laughs>
Now, this is the time where normally we would take our offering and donation. So, there is plates just before you go out on the last seat and before the, the seat on the back. There's a plate there. Please put your donations in as you go out. For those of you who are watching online, we have the joy of internet. I will put a link above this video. If you click on that, you'll be able to make a donation to this church. For the ministry of this church to flourish, may the Lord bless you as you do that. A moment of silence as we come before the Lord's table. The Lord is here. His the Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior by the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh and as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, was seen on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arm for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for your forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ is and so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all, rejoicing at his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We bring before you this bread and this cup, we pray you to accept this our duty and service, a spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we and all the company of the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through him from whom all good things come. Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Friends, Holy Communion is ready. We are still not allowed to distribute. However, I'm going to take Holy Communion on behalf of everybody here and all those who are watching. While I do that, please, there is music being played in the background. Use this time to pray. Anything that you are anxious about, anything that you're worried about, you shouldn't be worried about anything, but if you are worried about anything, bring that before God. Pray and leave that here today, for God will answer you as you pray. Let us say the prayer after communion together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Remember today, Genesis chapter 32, Matthew 18, verses 15 to 20. If you go online, I will put all of this above the video or below the video. Use that and pray in your effort to try and make peace. It's wonderful if you haven't got anybody to go and make peace with, but use that if you have somebody that you need to go and make peace with. And God will be with you. He will give you favor as you go and make that peace with the person. I have a vision. I, I, I have a dream. Is uh, Martin Luther, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, good, wonderful. Get my history co correct. <laughs> I have a vision of having at least 500 members. Not all at once in this church. <laughs> but, but in that vision, I plan on at least having three services each Sunday. One from 8 to 9. The next one from 9 to 10. The other one from 10 to 11. So as you go home, I'll give you a little gift for those of you who are new. Once you take that gift, there's a clause. It means you bring somebody next week. <laughs> so invite your friends to come and enjoy. Let people come and enjoy this good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us bless ourselves. You know, staying at home sometimes is too boring. You know, stay with your husband at home all the time. Before you know it, you are fighting. Come to church and be free. Okay? So, that is my vision. To have at least three services every Sunday morning. I want to have more, but I won't let that out first. Three every Sunday morning. 500 members. Help me achieve that goal for this church. Let the mission of this church be established all around Eastwood and South End. All right? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, as you go home, there is a news sheet. Take one with you. If you can't take one, then it will be online. I'll put it on our Facebook page or our web page. You find a copy there. Use it to get through the week. There's a lot of information in it that you can use for your morning devotions and your morning prayer as you get through the week. It's really helpful. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.